now we can talk about entropy and the second law of thermodynamics. So entropy is a measure of the randomness of a system, uh, it's a measure of disorder, and it's related to the various modes of motion in a molecule. So the molecules that can move more are, are, are going to have more modes of motion, they'll have higher entropy. So if you compare like a solid to a gas, uh, a solid is really stuck in place. Those atoms can't move that much. They can vibrate a little bit about in place, but they can't move past each other. They can't really rotate around their bonds. Um, but a gas can, right? A gases are going to, they're going to be moving all over the place. Gases are crazy. Uh, so when, we, when we're looking at the, the entropy change in a system, in, like in a reaction, you'd be comparing like how many moles of gas do I have uh, on my reactant side versus my product side? Am I making a solid or am I making a gas? And that would determine you know, whether, whether or not the entropy is increasing or if it's decreasing. So if you go from like a solid to a gas, and gases are on your product side, the entropy of your system is now increasing because you just made something that has higher entropy. Uh, so we said that entropy is a state function. A state function means it, it's pathway independent. It doesn't matter how you get there. Uh, it depends on the current state of your system. When you're looking at the change in entropy, uh, that delta usually means the final minus initial, like how is this thing changing? So like in a chemical reaction, you would have your products and, and your initial state would be your reactants. So you're kind of comparing what's the entropy of my products, what's the entropy of my reactants. You take the difference, products minus reactants, and then that sign of delta S, if it's positive, it means entropy is increasing. If it's negative, it means entropy is decreasing. So I have that written down here. So if delta S is positive, the entropy is increasing. Your system is becoming more disordered. That's like if you took a liquid and you turned it into a gas. So gases have the highest entropy, then liquids, and then solids, right? Because solids can't really move around that much. Liquids can move around a little bit more, and then gases can move around a lot. Um, so entropy, when entropy decreases, the delta S is going to be negative, and you're becoming more ordered. So when you think about entropy, just think about, you know, am I becoming more ordered, or am I becoming more disordered? Uh, and, and think about solids as being very ordered, they have low entropy, and then gases have a lot of disorder, they're going to have higher entropy. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, the, so for an isothermal process, so if you remember isothermal, isothermal just means the temperature is not changing. Uh, so we looked at uh, enthalpy curves in chapter 11 of Chem 1, uh, and we looked at how um, the, the, the enthalpy will, will increase um, it, when you, when you, under uh, like a melting curve. So if you start with a solid and you go to a gas, the, the enthalpy, you're, you're putting more um, enthalpy into your, into your system. But at certain points where you have a phase change, the temperature doesn't change in it. It's held constant. Even though you're putting energy into it, the temperature doesn't go up because it's, it's going to, um, the, all the energy is going to convert from your solid to the liquid, and that's an isothermal process. Um, so there's a lot of, there's many pathways that your system can take, but there's only one reversible pathway, and that's the one that takes the most amount of work. So if you want to calculate the entropy, the entropy change, uh, you can look at that Q reversible, the heat of that reversible pathway, divided by the temperature. And there's only one temperature because this is only going to work for an isothermal process. Uh, so let's, let's look at some of these phase changes and some of these isothermal processes. Um, so to go from a solid to a liquid, that's called fusion or melting. To go from a liquid to a gas, that's vaporization. And then to go from a solid all the way to a gas, just straight without, without melting, without going through the liquid phase, that's called sublimation. So that's what carbon dioxide does. It goes from a solid to a gas at room temperature and in atmospheric pressure, like one atmospheric pressure. Um, it doesn't melt, and so that's why it's called dry ice, because it doesn't, it doesn't hit that liquid phase. It just goes right from a solid to a gas. If in this whole process, and going in this direction, it's endothermic. You're putting heat into your system. Uh, to go in the other direction, it's exothermic. You're releasing heat. So if you go from a gas to a liquid, that's called condensation. A liquid to a solid is freezing. Um, a gas all the way to a solid without going through the liquid phase is called deposition. So those are exothermic. So if a process is endothermic in one direction, it's going to be exothermic in the other direction. And when you're looking at the enthalpy of these processes, you have the enthalpy of fusion, the enthalpy of vaporization, um, and you can also have the enthalpy of sublimation. We're mostly going to deal with these two. But these are endothermic, which means the delta H is going to be positive. Um, the reverse of those are exothermic. So if something's endothermic in one direction, it's exothermic in the other direction to the same extent. So if one process had an enthalpy of fusion that was like 500 kilojoules, the enthalpy of freezing would be negative 500 kilojoules per mole. So the enthalpy of fusion and the enthalpy of freezing, they're the same number, just you put a negative sign in front of one, in front of the, the um, exothermal.
from which one, and then vaporization and condensation. So when you're doing a problem, you really have to read, are they at, what are they asking for? Are they looking for the, the enthalpy of vaporization? Are they looking for the enthalpy of condensation? What am I trying to calculate? Let's try to do a, a sample exercise now. Let's try to calculate the enthalpy of fusion for one mole of water. And uh, sorry, the entropy of fusion. So delta S is entropy, and delta H is enthalpy. So we're going to calculate the entropy of fusion for one mole of water. And they give us the enthalpy of fusion here, and they give us the freezing point of water. So remember, it's zero degrees Celsius. We need to put all of our temperature in Kelvin. So if you're going to mess this problem up, that's probably what you're going to do. You're going to put the wrong temperature in. So let's see. So delta delta S, if you remember from before, delta S for an isothermal process, and this only works for isothermal processes, is Q reversible over T. Um, this is Since this is a phase change, our Q reversible is going to be just our delta H, and we pick delta H of fusion because we're trying to calculate the delta S of fusion. So remember Q and H were related, Q was heat, and delta H is the enthalpy, it's the heat of the reaction, as long as you're at constant pressure, they will be equal. Um, and then the reversible part, just because this is a, a phase change, so we want the, the delta H of fusion. Delta S is Q over T, which is equal to delta H over T. We have one mole. We want to take that into consideration that we have one mole. Um, th this, these are um, extensive properties, so they do depend on how much you have. Uh, the, enth the enthalpy of fusion here is 6.01 times 10 to the 3 joules per mole. And they told us we have one mole here. If they had two moles, then we would just put a two here. So our moles cancel, and then we divide by our freezing point, which is 273 Kelvin, and then we get 22 joules per Kelvin. And it, let's think about this process for a second. This is the uh, this is fusion. We're going from or, or melting. We're going from a solid to a liquid, and our entropy change is positive because the entropy is increasing. Uh, so that that kind of makes sense. You should always look at your answer and see if it makes sense. Um, if you were expecting it to be positive and you ended up with something negative, go back and check and make sure that you're, you're calculating what you think you were calculating. Let's try another one here. So in this problem, they tell you the normal boiling point of ethanol um, is 78.3 degrees Celsius. You want to put that in Kelvin right away. Uh, the molar enthalpy of vaporization, so that's your delta H of vaporization, is this. And they're looking for the entropy change, which is delta S in the system. They give you a mass of your ethanol and you're looking for the, en the entropy change when it condenses. So you're looking for the entropy of condensation, so when it's going from a solid, or it's when it's going from a gas to a liquid at its normal boiling point. So let's look at what we're given and what we have to find. So what we're given is pretty much in red, so they tell us the boiling point is 78.3. We want to go ahead and convert that to, to Kelvin, so we're going to add 273. I added the 0.15 here because we do have a decimal point, and we have a decimal place. Uh, if you didn't do that, you'll end up with something very similar once you round to the right number of sig figs. It's not really a big issue if you didn't put that in there. The delta H is 38.56 kilojoules per mole. Um, and then the mass. They give us the mass. They tell you this is 68.3 grams. We want to go from grams to moles. How do you go from grams to moles? Molar mass. And I'm sure you guys all remember how to calculate molar mass. So we have our, we can find the moles right here directly. So we have our moles. Now, what we're looking for again is the entropy of condensation. Um, so we need the enthalpy of condensation times moles over the boiling point. Now, the problem is that they didn't give us the entropy of uh, the enthalpy of condensation. They gave us the delta H of vaporization. So vaporization and condensation are kind of opposite processes. So if one is endothermic, the other one is exothermic. So the delta H of vaporization is just negative the delta H of condensation. So all you have to do is put a negative in front there. So you really had to read this problem. Um, but when, when you calculate it, it so what, what would we think happens? So uh, condensation, you're going from a, a gas to a liquid, you should expect a negative number. If you forgot this part and you put the wrong thing in, you would realize it at the end when you when you looked at your pro the answer and say, oh, wait a minute, why did I get a positive thing? This, is should, this should be negative. This should be a, the entropy should be decreasing because I'm going from gas, which is crazy disordered, to a liquid, which is more ordered. So the entropy should be going down. So even if you, you miss this step here, you can always catch it by looking at your answer and making sure it makes sense to you. So the delta H of condensation, just plug everything in. This is your delta H of condensation times the moles. And then I convert it to, uh, from kilojoules to joules. If you didn't do that, that's fine. Usually delta S is in joules and delta H is in kilojoules. Um, delta S is usually a lot smaller than, than delta